Hey everybody, I'm Dano, and Disneyland prices just got way more expensive. I don't know what to do! So overnight, Disney uh, decided to increase the prices for Disneyland tickets once again. They do this every year, kind of to be expected, almost every May, tickets go up. But, of course, the internet's pissed off about it. They don't want to do with anything. They're so angry. It went up by four bucks for the one ticket, you know, one day, one park price. So it's now $96. Four bucks shy of being $100 for going to one Disney park for one day. Yeah, I think it's absolutely outrageous that it costs that much. But I also feel like you kind of get what you pay for. They increased other prices like the deluxe pass. So now it is $519 per person. Doesn't matter if you're a child or an adult, which I think that's kind of wrong. They should maybe change those two, and kids shouldn't have to pay as much as adults, even if they do get to go all year. I don't know, just my thoughts. But, so that's now 519 bucks. The premium pass with no blackout days is 699 almost $700, pretty much $700. And the interesting thing they did was they got rid, well, they didn't get rid of, they suspended the SoCal annual passport, and I wonder what that's going to mean for all the locals. I mean, I, I get why they're doing it. They want to hopefully thin the crowds that are there and make it more worthwhile to the tourists that actually spend more money. Um, Cause the locals, a lot of them will show up and they won't, they just don't have the same spending habits as tourists who've come from halfway across the world who are really, really looking forward to their trip. They spend more, they buy souvenirs, they buy more food, they want the whole experience. Whereas the locals, which are probably all the SoCal, you know, annual passport holders, they ate at home, they already have all the souvenirs. And yes, I understand they do spend money and they are great to have there, and they've helped Disney on quite a bit. But it's just funny to see that Disney said, all right, for the time being, we're going to suspend new sales. If you already had one, cool, we'll let you renew it. If it's going to expire within the 90 days, you can renew it. But if not, too bad. You either got to pay more for one of the regular passes, or don't go at all. And of course, uh, OC Register posted an article on it, and the comments are great. Every time, every year, actually I think it's twice a year, um, sometime earlier in the year, Disney World raised their prices, and the other's articles come out from My Sage, Laughing Place, all those stuff. And the comments are always so hilarious, especially from Facebook, because Facebook is, well, it's Facebook. All the comments are so angry, like, oh my god, everyone just gets so, so fired up because these prices increased. And it's not a surprise, it shouldn't be a surprise at all. This happens every year. Uh, I want to thank Mice Chat on Twitter. They tweeted, surprise price increase, increases despite three major rides being down, one classic dark ride, and no new e-ticket in almost 20 years. They said it's a surprise price increase. I'm sorry, but a reputable site, and I kind of, you know, I think it's somewhat reputable. I've been following Mice Chat for years now. And the fact that they're using this is like a, I don't know, like a scare tactic, like, oh, surprise price increase. That's just ridiculous. They weren't the least bit surprised. If you follow the parks at all, you, you know, you keep up with this kind of stuff. There's nothing surprising about it at all. You expect one from Orlando beginning of the year. You expect another price increase in May or April, usually May, uh, for Disneyland. It just, it happens every year like clockwork. And it's it's not a surprise. It's not, you know, why, why get so fired up over it? It's going to happen. By now, we should have learned to expect it. Ten years ago, before the internet was as huge as it is and we covered every little minute detail of everything like I'm doing now. Yeah, it would have been a surprise. But now, you know, anything the Disney company does, especially just how ridiculous all the coverage is now, they even make, they blink an eye and everyone reports on it instantly like that. Boom, it's everywhere. So I just think it's a little ridiculous that it blows up so badly every year. Uh, here's some of the comments I found on the OC Register article. Uh, this one woman says, so what they're saying is we only want rich people in our parks. Screw Disneyland. No, they don't want just rich people in their parks. They want all kinds of people in their parks. But let's look at the facts here. If you were to go to, say, a poor side of town or wherever you live, what, do you, what are the things you find there? You find rundown buildings. There's graffiti everywhere, sometimes violence. I mean, just seriously, look up the statistics in your own town or wherever you're from and tell me that's not true. Tell me the poor side of town isn't more prone to violence and isn't more run down and not taken care of. Now, those same characteristics, do you want that to start happening in Disneyland? No. So when they price up a little bit, yes, they do keep the riffraff out a little bit more, but rightfully so. Like, I mean, not to say that all poor people are awful and violent, but generally 
the people who are violent and don't take care of stuff usually are poor. So not everybody is going to be good people. There's a lot of awful people out there. Uh, And there's, you know, a lot of rich people who are awful people. But there's a lot of, when you go to a poor area, there's a lot of those bad things that you don't necessarily want in your family-friendly Disney park. Now, do you? And now Disneyland's nothing like, say, Magic Mountain. Now, I haven't been to Magic Mountain in a long time, so I couldn't really tell you how it is today. But I know I went last about 10 years ago. And the impression that it left me with was that it was pretty run down. Like, there was a lot of stuff that was broken. I don't mean rides that were broken down, but I mean, like stuff in the queue area that was broken and looked hazardous, buildings that looked run down, there was graffiti everywhere, and the overall vibe of the people at the park, there was a lot of gangs. It was, it's not somewhere that I would take my kids now, but the price was way lower, so you get what you pay for, right? Uh, Another person said, I thought Disneyland was all about family fun and memories. People need to boycott this place. Yes, I understand that it's a little, it's a, well, it's a lot harder now for families to, uh, to be able to afford this. In fact, personally, I've got a family of four, and next year we're planning on, we didn't go this year, but next year we're planning on getting annual passes again, as I've been an annual pass holder off and on since about 2000. Every couple years or so, I'll get another annual pass, uh, depending on what's going on. If there's a lot of reason to be down there, because I live in Vegas, I don't live in California. Yeah, I'll get an annual pass for that year. Like next year, we've got uh, Star Wars Celebration right across the street. Possibly WonderCon if we go again. Uh, D23 is going to happen there. So there's a lot of reason that my family's going to be there. So we figure, you know what? It's going to be worth the investment for us to just buy the annual passes for 2015. And we'll get our whole year out of Disney. And we'll decide from there what we're going to do after that. But we don't have the option of the monthly pay plan. So it's not as convenient when we pay. We're going to have to pay that giant lump sum up front, uh, which is a little bit harder to do. But you know what? Like, seriously, just budget and save for it. No big deal, right? I mean, I know it's not the easiest thing to do, but if you, like, really want to go, it's worth that extra little bit of work. So the people who are all complaining, like, oh, there's no more... SoCal, you can't do the thing, because people in SoCal, for anyone who's not a Super Disney fan who's checking this out, um, they have the option, which is really awesome for them, to do monthly payment plans, which is really cool. Like, I wish I could do that. That would be really great for me and my family. But we don't live in SoCal, and it is what it is. What are you going to do? So now I want to hear what you guys think. Do you think the uh, the price increase was too much? How does it affect you? Does it, does it mean you're not going next year? There's a lot of people saying, I'm not going next year. I can't do it. We're... My family's done with Disney. No more. They keep raising the prices. Uh, But how does it make you feel? Do you feel like, no, I can't can't afford this anymore. They're going to price themselves out. Or do you feel like, yeah, that's normal. They're doing what they're doing. Either way, whatever you think, leave it down below because I want to know how it makes you guys feel. You guys got to see how it made me feel. Now I want to see your part. Be sure to like this video. Share it with your friends. Get the discussion going. Um, I definitely want to talk to all of you. You can follow me on Twitter, at Dano Flores. On Instagram, same thing, at Daniel Flores. And on Google+, Plus, there's a little red ball boop, right here in front of my nose. Click on it or check down below for all the uh, cool social media websites that I'm attached to. And uh, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. Later.